Hi folks, this is Dr. Rex Gatto, a business psychologist. I've completed a series of new webinars for nurses and physicians to help them address the stress of the job. These webinars are for all medical providers, but in general, especially for people working in the ICU in COVID floors. This particular webinar is how to deal effectively with difficult people, dealing with difficult people. And we are going to look at the seven different types of difficult people. Do you get up in the morning and think, wow, how can I be difficult? Or get up in the morning and think, how many difficult people can I work with today? So we are going to identify the seven types of difficult people, learn how to cope with each one of those seven different types of difficult people, discover how to accomplish and really develop fewer aggravations and design a coping plan in moving forward as you deal with difficult people. These are the seven types of difficult people. The hostile aggressive, the person who is just nasty, people who complain all day long, the silent and unresponsive. Super agreeables who agree to everything and get nothing done. The negative person who complains and negative, negative, negative. This won't work. We tried this. Nothing. Know-it-alls. They have an opinion about everything. And then working with the indecisives. A few years back, I had to work with a person who was very indecisive. I finally walked into his office and said, make a decision. Make any decision. Just make a decision. How do we cope with all of these difficult types of people? Number one, relax. Take a deep breath. Just relax. Relax. Getting upset, how's that going to change them? Just relax. That will minimize the impact that they have on you. Stop. Think. Reflect. How can you remain in control? Don't emotionally react, rationalize. Think about what you need to do. Identify the one thing, one thing, one thing that you can do to resolve the issue. Stay balanced, homeostatic, stay balanced. Be mindful, be aware of the present situation, be attentive to the present situation, focus on goals, and then we will talk together about how to take appropriate action. There is a plan that you can design for yourself. Not perfect, but it's a plan. We will go through each one of the seven. I'll identify traits, and then we will also look at a plan for you to cope with each one of the seven difficult types of people. First, hostile aggressives bullies. They overwhelm you with information and they have temper tantrums. How do you deal with that person? First, stay calm. Focus on facts. Focus on the facts. State the facts. State the issues. Make sure you make eye contact. Don't look away. Look right at the person. Set ground rules. I had to deal with someone a few years back. And every time I started to say something, that person interrupted me. And I set a ground rule. If you interrupt me, I will stop. I stop. If that person and when that person interrupted, I stop. I would stop and just sit there. Set ground rules. Don't be a punching bag. Don't get pushed around. Use visuals. And that takes the eye contact off of you and onto a visual. Even if you picked up a piece of paper and wrote one sentence, and I've done that in meetings where I have written a large sentence, large font, and I have actually held it up and I've looked at it to break eye contact, make statements such as my opinion, in my experience, what I have seen in the past, state facts. You disarm emotions with facts. Silent and unresponsive. They look at you, they nod and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. Something that you can do to work with an unresponsive person is ask open-ended questions. Those are questions, no yes or no. It's not, did you like, but explain how you did this. 
what are the things that would be most helpful the next time we work together? Open-ended questions. Avoid statements that call for very controversial opinions. Sometimes people are unresponsive because they do have social phobia or they just don't have the confidence to speak up. So don't hurt anybody. Ask, what are your thoughts? What's your reaction? What happened? Can you share with me some of your thoughts and feelings? Complainers, gripers, they think everything stinks. They're black and white thinkers, meaning everything is bad, nothing is good. And they gripe about it and they find fault with everything. How do you deal with these people? Stop the cycle of absolutely everything is bad. Poor me, everything, this organization is no good. Everything bad, everything bad. Respectful, be very respectful, understand the issues and discuss the issues. Use phrases such as specific, what happened when, what are the facts? Let's discuss the key issues. Take your time. This isn't something that you can roll over. A complainer needs to be influenced, meaning that they need time to buy into and adopt ideas. Complainers love to complain. Why? They get attention. Here's something that you may not have known. I call it ADR. Take a moment and just read what I have. ADR, accusation, defense, reaccusation. You didn't bring my meds on time. Accusation. I was very busy with other patients. They were having problems. That's my defense. I don't care, I'm a patient too. I want it on time. So you see this, this cycle goes on. How do you break it? You didn't bring my meds on time. You're, you're right, I didn't. Your meds are here right now and the few minutes will not be a problem. Let's go, don't mean it's a problem, but, but let's take the meds that are here right now Let's take those meds as opposed to defending and then getting into this cycle of ADR. Know-it-alls. Yes. Yes, I know. They say it in a condescending way. And they don't really help the situation. Although they may be very knowledgeable, know-it-alls do not come across in a nice way sharing the information. I had a professor at the University of Pittsburgh that defined wisdom as sharing your knowledge lovingly. It's one thing that know-it-alls don't do. They don't share their wisdom lovingly. They do it in a condescending way. Problem is they may be right. The other problem is they make everyone angry. How to deal with know-it-alls? And they can be very, very competitive. And, and again, they could be very productive. Help them to understand an alternative, but don't challenge directly. Listen, <clears throat> acknowledge, paraphrase back so that they know that you are listening. Try to expand. So one of the things that you said, Charlie, is, Mary, you've expressed that and, and build an alternative, work with them. A lot of times, again, they may be saying the right things, but help them to understand that they could say it in a nice way. Negativists, it won't work. If you ever want to get my goat and you see me around, all you need to do is put your hand up and say, no, and want to interject. That hand gets me every time. I'll be honest with you, it does get me. I'll be glad to share. But what they want you to do is to shut up and listen to them. And so you can hear all of the things that have occurred. So coping with a negativist. Take a look at your own vulnerability working with them because you know what? When someone is so negative and they bring things up like that, they want to build a group, a negative group. As a matter of fact, come on in. Let's go to lunch every day and complain about the organization and tell you how bad it is and how negative things are. It won't work. We tried that before. We don't have the money. Everything is cut back, cut back, cut back. You could do it. Don't try to convince them because all they'll do is suck you in. 
focus and understand yourself and actually how that can impact you. Think of the best worst case scenario. Negativists may be bringing up some truthful points, but then help them to understand what might be the best outcome. Super agreeables, very, very personable. They're very friendly. They pull in. Yeah, look at her. Yeah, think about this. This is a way to do it. But they don't do anything. They have a great need to be the benevolent person, well liked. There's no problem, no conflicts. Everything is great. But get down and ask, what's your opinion? What's the timetable? When do you think we could do this? I'm sure if you've had to work with a super agreeable, they've driven you crazy because they say they're going to do and they don't do. And all they do is push your timetable to get things done off. Indecisives. They can't decide because everything needs to be perfect. And if you've ever worked with a procrastinator, everything is last minute because they procrastinate and nothing is good enough until it's absolutely perfect. We don't live in a perfect world. We live in a world that we have to adapt and adjust and continue to make decisions. Decisions today cannot be evaluated next week. You, you can't use today's thinking to evaluate decisions you made two weeks ago. This is something that you need to focus on and refocus. Indecisives don't make decisions because everything has to be perfect. Help them to understand it doesn't have to be perfect. And so you can avoid making a decision and taking action, be pleasant and very supportive. But whatever you do, help them and guide them in a step-by-step -step process to work out the issues. Help them to understand the information that they have may be enough and they can make a decision predicated just on that. Sometimes people are difficult because they feel overwhelmed. And in today's world, they're trying to balance too much. They're trying to balance the family and they're overwhelmed at work. And they have an overpowering feeling of all of this is coming down on them. Family, in the pandemic, you have kids at home, you've got a lot of issues and chaos, civil unrest, and we have leaders not leading. Trying to balance all of that just within the family is difficult. And then responsibilities and the high patient load and the high census in a lot of the hospitals. The level of stress, people are feeling overwhelmed. Things are out of control. Remember that as you feel overwhelmed, it's never one thing, it's a combination of many things. So we're gonna talk about 10 ways to resolve conflict and that's within yourself and conflict within others to work with difficult people. Number one, take a look at, at what the issues, whatever the issue is. If the person is negative, if the person is telling you this won't work or giving you an opinion because they're a know-it-all or that they're just hostile, aggressive. Take a look at it. The next thing is, what do you agree on? Find an area of agreement. Don't just keep bantering back and forth. Listen, listen intently. Listen to understand what they are saying. Listen, understand that different perspectives, understand the emotions of it, the content of it, the prejudice and biases of it, understand that, look at the issues, actions, and behaviors. And once you do that, that can help to clarify working with the people who are very difficult to work with. Clearly present your points of view. Don't over explain. Don't over explain. Just stay with the facts, no emotion. If you can use a visual, that would be helpful. A visual takes the eye contact off of you and onto that visual and you can explain facts. Don't wallow in the past. Talk about the future, how you can work together. Look at areas of responsibility that could help in how you might work together and collaborate. Take a look at a plan for the future. A lot of times when people get into conflict with difficult people, they talk about the past and they're saying, you, you, you did this, you did that, this company did this, the hospital leadership said that. 
Stay focused on the future and look for a positive affirmation. Don't build on negative. Look at the issues forthrightly and build a positive response, a positive response, and understand your own emotions in this. Understand your own emotions in the fact of working with a very difficult person. Here is a plan. Take a moment and look at the plan. You could copy this out, you could handwrite it, or you could put it in your computer. Make sure that you assess the situation and what the person is actually said or accused or denied, not done. Look at the situation. Look at the difficulties that is really brought up. And then what is your level of tension or stress? How can you take responsibility? What do you see as an outcome? What could you do differently? You might even put in there what they could do differently. But this is a way to focus a strategy, to create a strategy, to help to focus your own ideas. Remember to focus on maturity. I'm using the word focus because it is your attention, your mental attention. Demonstrate maturity at all times. Don't get sucked into working with difficult people on their level. Create trust. Trust is, I say what I do. Trust is, I can demonstrate the knowledge that is needed in this situation. Stay in the moment. Stay in the now. Don't get caught up into the past. I've outlined for you the seven different types of difficult people and a way to really resolve issues. One of the key points is always look for agreement. Go to the biggest picture possible and say, let's talk about what we agree on as opposed to what we don't agree on. And then you can use this coping plan to manage your own thoughts and emotions. Here are some references for you. Dealing with difficult people, there's 10 expert techniques Different people have outlined different ways of doing it and a guide to dealing with difficult people. Both can be resources for you. If you find yourself needing some support or you have a question for me, my contact information is on the left hand side. I'd be very happy to address any questions that you have. Keep in mind, difficult people are always looking for people to agree with them and the way that they work. Negative people like to work with other negative people and go to lunch with them to create the negative club. And the same with the complainers. They love to get people to agree with them and to complain. Don't get caught. Stay unemotional working with the seven types of difficult people.